Hello, everybody, and you're very welcome to this session from the Think Tank. You're all coming in there. We're just hoping that Zuck allows us in as well. Um, he's at the moment saying, go away, you guys. I don't want to talk to you. So we mustn't be giving him enough money at the moment, Damien, whatever we're well, doing wrong. People rolling, so. <laughs> <laughs> so people are joining us. So we let everybody come in while we wait for Facebook to prepare. And uh, hopefully we'll go live on Facebook as well. So you're all very welcome to this session of the Think Tank. Um, you're all coming in. So there's 25 of you coming in. Um, you're welcome, uh, Fred. We're happy to do this and deeply honored that we have Damien McKillicuddy here with us. So there's still people coming in, Damien. So we'll just give him another moment or two. I don't know, no. do you sing, Damien? No, you, can, you don't sing songs or anything like that. Or... I can't carry a tune in a bucket roll, I'm afraid. <laughs> Very good. But I don't think Facebook's going to let us in there. So we'll, we, we, we might start in. There's still people coming in. So, uh, Fred, panelists, maidens, let me see. What are you saying there? Uh, well, we see. So Alison says, hello, hello. You're very welcome. And Fred says, made an Irish stew in your honor last week. Thank you very much, Fred. I wonder what did you put into it? Did you put lamb or did you put beef? Or I hope there was Irish spuds in there anyway. You can't do without an Irish spud. Do you like an Irish spud, Damien? If I'm honest, Ronan, I'm more, I'm more Mexican and Indian. I like a little bit of right. Right, right. Very good. Very good. Right. Well, Zuck's not letting us in, so I think we just power on here because we've 40 people here with us now um, and we can put the recording and if it comes live, I'll, I'll post it in there anyway and, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get that done. So, Damien, um, most of the world probably know you in the photography industry. For anyone who doesn't know you, tell us a little bit about you and your background. And Oh, right. Um, I started back in 1986 by being thrown out of art school. I'm being told I'd never make a photographer. Um, fortunately, I've managed to make the largest part of my income in, in that 35 years from photography. Um, I hold 17 fellowships, I think. I've won 13 Photographer of the Year titles, over 800 national, international, regional titles. And I'm, I'm very proud now to be helping out a, a small group of other photographers build their photography skills and their photography business alongside running our studio with my wife, uh, Leslie, and our um, girl, Friday Lily, who, who does, well, she started as a makeup artist and now does everything. Um, and that's pretty much where I am. It's, it's, I have a passion for photography. I still have a love of photography. And I feel very lucky that um, I actually, no matter how bad my days are, I don't get up and um, have to go to work. I fortunately, uh, you know, get to play and get paid for a living. Very good. Very good. So, um, Damien, tell us this. Um, Times are tough now, right? Like the industry is going through a hard time, like all businesses, but it's, it's a tough time, isn't it? Yeah, um, and unfortunately, lots of photographers fall into that position where they miss out on lots of the government subsidy or support that's been put into place because of, A, the way that their accountants have suggested they pay themselves or because they've not got premises that... Um, like they get small business rates relief. So there are, there are lots of people that have fallen through the cracks, Ronan, and it's hard. It's tough. Mm. But um, on the other side of that, you were talking, you've been on a couple of think tank panels now on the sales and marketing front and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and you coined a phrase called moral marketing. Yeah. And it really resonated with me. Can you tell people what moral marketing is about? Yeah, basically, um, one of the best things I've done recently was join a local group to help um, out in the COVID-19 situation. And what it actually did was gave me, um, without thinking about it, immediate feedback to the way that the general public were feeling. And just before we were about to run our Mother's Day, uh, our traditional Mother's Day sales and marketing um, this year, I got this distinct impression that this was the wrong time to try and sell anybody anything. It was just at the point where Richard Branson was getting lambasted for asking for 7.2 billion to be bailed out by the government, et cetera. 
and we changed our um, advert to, to say, look, guys, we did a little video just like this, just to say, look, normally we'd be selling your Mother's Day gift vouchers. We're not going to do it this year. It's really unprecedented times. So what we are going to say is keep safe, keep well. And anybody that wants to have a complimentary session and uh, a web res image, when we're allowed to do that, stick your name in here and we'll honour it. We'll honour that commitment. And um, moral marketing is basically taking the temperature of the local community, figuratively speaking, and feeling that now isn't the time to be selling anybody anything. Now's the time to be doing a little bit of good. So just like I've been this morning to the chemist um, to pick up my own prescription, I've picked up prescriptions for other people and dropped them off. And moral marketing is about reaching out into your community and doing something that benefits the community. Like we, we have... Um, uh, some downloadable colouring pictures that, that we've started to turn into a competition. But the prize has got nothing to do with photography. We're not advertising our services. The prize isn't a sitting. It's not a free 10 by 8. It's literally whoever colours in the nicest picture. And I think, I don't know if I can show you, maybe I can. I've even done one myself. So there's, there's my Beatles vibe colouring in just because I thought the kids were having far too much fun. And whoever wins, I'll just get Leslie to, to copy it, blow it up, print it at A2, frame it, and give it to somebody. And then they've got a piece of personal artwork that they've designed and coloured on their wall at home. Now, that's what you know the kid will win, or, the, or hopefully if I enter, I might win. Um, but the whole idea of doing it was to give mum and dad just 20 minutes break. Because I, I don't know about you, but um, I have a whole new respect for teachers. Yes. Having our 10 year old and 14 year old at home is, is ever so slightly trying at times. Um, and the, the idea was to give the community who were saying, wow, bloody hell, this is hard, isn't it? Just an opportunity to, to have 20 minutes to themselves and a cup of tea. Um, and that, in, in essence, in a nutshell, that's what moral marketing is. It's being of use to the community without intentionally selling them something. The payoff for us as a business is hopefully we get well thought of. And the old maxim in, in sales is people buy people first. So when this is all over, when this is ended, which it will at some point, then um, people will think, they'll remember us because hopefully we brought a little bit of good into the life. Right. That's okay. So um, in the past, we've had conversations about the photography industry in Britain and Ireland. Yeah. Um, and how that it's a pity that we can't all come together as an industry. Absolutely. Because we can do more for not just photographers in that sense, but we can do more for people. And we can, you know, I see it in America with PPA, you know, PPA, there's one big organization. So they can do a lot of things for the industry there. But like they've, they've working with Congress right now to get copyright laws through for, for, for um, photographers to protect photographers and small artists and stuff. So we've had a lot of chats about this in the past. Yeah. And, um, but, and we've had some conversations the last week or so with some other industry people about how could the industry come together to help the real heroes right now that we're seeing. Can you talk about those heroes first and then what, what, what we're talking about might be a possibility here? Yeah. Really, everybody knows you, you've got to be living under a rock to realise how, how, how non-self-serving and how, how professional and how kind the frontline NHS staff are being. And, you know, they, they, they're genuinely risking their lives to look after us. You know, in my grandparents' time, you know, they were being bombed every night. It was, it was, it was horrendous. 
all we're really being asked to do is socially distance, sit at home and watch Netflix. And we still can't get that right to, to, to some extent. Um, and I just, you know, we've had inspirational things happen like Captain Tom doing those, one, you know, people go, well, he's just walked around his garden. But I found out yesterday, it's 1.6 miles to walk around that fella's garden. And he's nearly you know, 100. <laughs> he is, yeah. And he, he, served, he served his nation once during World War II and he's, he's done it again. What an incredible feat. And I just think sometimes our industry is so insular and so inward looking that we never ever see the bigger picture. And I'd love us to be able to come together and do something that isn't directly for us, doesn't directly benefit us, but benefits somebody else. And this is where, you know, as, as you say, we've spoken to some um, of our industry colleagues and friends, and we've, we've come up together with something that, that I think um, everybody should and would want to take part in. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know if you want me to, to, to go into any greater detail at this yeah, point. Well, yeah, well, well, I think what we want to do is we want to see can we unite the photography yeah. industry to see how can we support our NHS heroes, right? Yeah, I mean, we've been able to encapsulate that really in one phrase. I asked um, a, a, a mentee of mine, uh, a great guy called uh, David Clark Damo, to, to put together a graphic for us. Now, I can hopefully screen share that and show you now, unless you've got it, Roman. No, that'd be great. Yeah. Unless, unless I get this horrendously wrong, please bear you with should, me. You should see me with technology, Damien. If I try to do that, the whole thing will go pear-shaped, I promise. Have a look then. <laughs> right. This, this, I think will show you the logo and what the whole essence of what we're trying to do is. Can you see that logo now? Is it there? Yes, yes, we can see right. that. So it's genuinely photography without frontiers. You don't have to belong to an organization. You don't have to belong to an association. You don't have to be a client of 3XM. You don't have to be on Mentomy on steroids. You don't have to use a particular camera or a particular lighting brand or anything. You just need to be a photographer that wants to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem and, and share, well, basically yours and, 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 and my ethos in what we believe in and what we want to give back. So if I stop the share now, sure. then I appear back by magic. <laughs> And the, the idea, it's, it's not a rocket science thing. It's just, and, and, and again, I'm not suggesting anybody does this immediately now because we need to stay at home. We, we, we need to do the things that we need to do. But the idea is that, that we, we put our resources together, yourself and, and me, and we'll, we, we've got a, um, basically a, a, a charity initiative that we'd like to put out to as many photographers as possible so they can put it out to as many people as possible. They don't have to do anything. You know, we, as you see, we're doing the graphics, we're, we're doing the mechanics of it. Um, you're even going to uh, have a, 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 an information, a marketing funnel made for us, aren't you? So it, it's as simple as possible to just go, yeah, I want to take part. How do I take part? Well, here's all the instructions. Off you go. And then hopefully we'll raise, um, well, anything's better than nothing, but hopefully we'll raise a serious amount of money to help the NHS. And whether you believe, you know, we should or we shouldn't be doing it and government should be doing it is irrelevant. The fact is that we have the power to be able to benefit um, the institution that is really fighting so hard to make a huge difference in our, in our lives daily. And I think that's really, really important. Um, so all we're asking people to do is, is please think about it. Please take part. Um, you don't have to do anything other than in return for a donation, you will promise the person that donates that when it is safe and appropriate to do so, you will invite them into your 
studio or you'll go out into a park as he's opposite me and you'll take some lovely pictures for them of the kids or of the family or the dog or whatever it is and you will give them a web uh, res um, image free of charge and hopefully as you see with so many campaigns we'll be able to turn social media our colour the colour that we want to to say thank you NHS from the photographic industry it really is that simple you so know, so what you're saying to me is if the, if the photographer feels that they share the same values as we have about supporting our NHS heroes, yeah. they can get involved in this program. We will supply some the content to help them implement it and some training around implementing it properly. And what they do then is they ask for a, don a donation starting from five pounds for the public to get this photo session, which guarantees them yeah. a free res image we asked the photographer to add five pounds to that donation yeah that's um, exactly right and then um and then what i've said from 3xm's point of view is we're willing to give for every money returned of that 10 pound donation from photographer we will give the photographer 10 pounds against 3xm or photo values product but they don't have to buy any product from 3xm no, or photo value to implement totally, this program. it's totally agnostic i mean I, I think you've been exceptionally generous doing that because it it limits the financial exposure of of the individual photographer should they choose to use what you're offering them but they don't have to it's not compulsory it, it, you know, it's got nothing to do with it. I'm not expecting anybody to come on one of our workshops or join Mentor Me or anything like that. It's a total agnostic, you know, photography without frontiers. Um, prom promotions, perhaps, the, you know, it is the right word. Promotion to help the NHS um, gather much needed funds just like yesterday, I was speaking to, to a, one of my other lovely mentees who, while we were chatting, was sat at home making up scrubs for the local maternity hospital because she had, you know, cotton there. She's a bit of a dab hand sewing. I suppose I should say hello, Lynn. Um, and she was doing something lovely for no reward to herself other than the satisfaction of knowing she was doing something lovely. And that's what I want to do. But that's what our industry, I want our industry to do en masse. Because let, let's be honest, with the general public, um, over maybe the last 10 or 15 years, the photography industry has got a bit of a bad press. You know, hard selling, not doing the right job, not producing, you know, I'll do your wedding and then not turning up or doing a rubbish job. And, you know, it makes the newspapers, etc. The benefit that we would get immediately as an industry from this, if we are going to be slightly self-serving, is that it, it would be a hugely positive PR campaign to say to the people in our local community, hey, do you know what? We care. We care and we want to do something really important. Now, um, I, I've not really mentioned this in the, in the build-up to this, um, but I have spoken to you about it a, a while back. Um, I, I happened to lose my dad nine years ago. And as much as I hate it, the most precious thing I have is the one portrait he let me make three months before he died. And it was just one of those things that I got a phone call at work. And my dad, I said, hi, dad. He said, hello, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm working. He said, are you really busy? I said, well, what do you need? If you need something, I'll, I'll, I'll help. He says, you've got 15 minutes to come round and I'll let you take that picture that you want to take, but you've only got 15 minutes because your uncle Derek's on the way. So Leslie and I literally picked up a couple of speed lights, drove round to me dad's. Leslie's moving stuff in his house in the background to, to produce the, the background that we wanted. I'm chatting away. I'm saying, dad, will you lean on me stick? And he's like, oh, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, oh, go on. And he did it. We got maybe three or four exposures. And I hate it because it doesn't look like my dad and I know he's dying. I know he's dying of cancer. But nine years on, 10 years on later this year, if I hadn't have got that picture, 
I wouldn't know what my dad looked like. I wouldn't be able to remember it. So it's, it's really precious to me, just like this will be the second year uh, anniversary that I lost my best friend. You know, my best friend died at 48 with a brain tumour. Um, and again, the NHS were just awesome with him. Um, as was one of the local cancer charities, Halton Haven. Um, and, and we do, you know, in my studio personally, we don't charge a session fee anymore. We, we swap a session for a donation to that hospice because the work they did with people I love were, was amazing. And I didn't realise they had to earn, I think they earn either two thirds or three quarters of the money they need. They have to raise themselves. They don't get it from the government. Um, and to me, this is no different. It's just a way of saying thank you. But if we all pitch in and we all do it as an industry, then, you know, e even if it's not your full time job, if this is something that you do and you, 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 you do it part time, this would be a great thing for us to stand up as an industry and say, thank you, we care um, and, and, and just raise a little bit of money, you know, the, the, this the other side for us, the bit that's not going to hurt us is all of a sudden we start wearing the white hat instead of the black hat with our local public and they'll perhaps think a little bit better of us when they do need photographic services. And I think it'll also, Damien, like when I speak around the world and I, I, when, I, when I go to the US and stuff and I talk to a lot of photographers and I say, you know, the reason why I'm in this industry is I have a passion for this industry because I know the difference the work that professional photographers create makes. Like you've just talked there about the portrait of your dad and your best friend and, you know, but even when we're living and we interact with a portrait, like I say to a photographer, what's the reaction when somebody sees the pet wonderful pet photo you have or the family picture or the woman who sees her boudoir or makeover shoot or whatever you know it makes them smile and feel better about themselves you know and I, I tell them that it's it's proven in biology when someone smiles it releases endorphins into our body endorphins release stress so a lot of what photography does actually helps people be healthier mind body and spirit it doesn't actually help us against COVID-19 and we don't do the same job we don't put our lives in the line like the NHS do but we do help to, to create a healthier society in mind, body and spirit. The, tr the truth is, I've always known photography and portraiture is important. But until losing my dad, I didn't know it was imperative. You know, the one thing that my dad stressed in his will was he had a portrait that I'd shot of his three grandchildren. The only thing that he was bothered about was he wanted that buried with him. Wow. Now that shows to me the power of what we do, the social importance of what we do, the emotive power of what we do. When I'm sat at my desk at work, I have, there's two, um, there's, there's two 24, 24 images of both my, my boys. I mean, the reason there isn't three of them is at 27, I Matthew won't pose for us anymore. <laughs> But, you know, we've got Callum and we've got, we've got Hayden. So when I'm sitting there and I'm having a day where I think, oh, do you know what? I could do without this. When I look up and I see my boys, I realise why I'm doing it. I realise why I'm working. I realise that they are the managing directors of my company. And it just makes me, you know, be able to carry on that little bit, that little bit more, that little bit better. And if, if that wasn't true, if there wasn't that emotional connection between the picture, then there'd be no need for what we do. People would just go to the bus depot and stick five pound in the photo booth and get a likeness. We don't make likenesses. We make emotive portraits that make people feel, that make them think, like you say, that makes them smile. It's hugely important what we do. And to combine our skills and our ability in our industry with, um, you know, the way the public would see this and want to get on board. And, and let's be honest, it is an introduction to various members of the public to, to individual studios. But that's not the reason for doing it. The reason for doing it is to be able to, to generate as much money as possible to say thank you 
I mean, it'd be awesome, wouldn't it, if we, we, we generated so much money that we, that we had a little bit of control on it. And we said, okay, don't put it straight into the NHS. Let's send everybody that's worked for a weekend's holiday. You know, that something, something fantastic, you know, that would, would show those risking themselves and risking their families, quite frankly, to help out ordinary members of the public that in the vast majority of cases, they will never have met and never meet again. I just think is morally the right thing to do. It's, it's, so, it's moral marketing. So if people want to get involved, Damien, we're, you're planning, we're planning a, a, a meetup, a, an online meetup, because we have social distancing uh, next Tuesday at 4 p.m. British yeah. Standard Time. So yeah. I'm going to post a link now here in the comments. So if anyone shares the same values that Damien and I share, want to get involved in this charity initiative to raise money for the NHS heroes, our NHS heroes, please um, just sign up to that meeting. Please don't DM us and, and start sending us emails because we don't have time to respond to everyone individually. But our plan is that anyone who wants to be involved, please um, come to that meeting, which is next Tuesday at 4 p.m. I'm going to post the link now and we will have some more information to share with you. And from that, then we'll be able to move forward with this charity initiative to raise funds to support our NHS heroes. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that people could do, Ronan, is because it, let's be honest, it's four o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday, I believe it is. It's Tuesday, and, I think, is it? Is it? Yeah, no, I think it's Tuesday. Whatever. I think so. <laughs> it all blows into the, the fact is, I can look out of my window now, and I'm fortunate enough to live opposite a big park, and it's beautiful. It's lovely out there, and although people are social distancing, you know, there's a couple of kids with the mum running around playing catch and there's people throwing bread at the baby swans and there's an old guy by the bus stop and, you know, people are outside now. So if the people that are watching this, um, do it does resonate with them and they want to help, share this. Share, cause I'm, I, you know, I can see you recording it. So just yeah. share it, take it, send the link to as many photographers as you know as many organizations as you know. And um, let's see if we can get hundreds, if not thousands of photographers interested in helping us, um, you know, raise money for the NHS. All we're doing, all, all you have to commit to is sharing our values, um, plugging in the concept that we're, we're putting together it will just work for you and the, the the only hard thing you're doing is committing to agreeing that in the future when it's safe and it's a, we're able to do so that you'll honor the donations that the members of public make with a session and a digital social media sized image that will be watermarked with photography without frontiers logos that's all. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Damien. It's a true honor that I can work with you on this project and support them the best way you we can. You have so kissed the Blarney Stone. <laughs> you have, my friend. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I'm actually an introvert. People don't believe me when I tell them I'm actually a Myers Briggs introvert. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I do something like this, I have to crawl into a corner and just <laughs> recover. <laughs> but listen, thank you so much for everything you do for the industry. Um, it's not the first time and hopefully we can get the industry united behind one big event to raise money for the N our NHS heroes. Um, and we will do whatever we can to support with that. And um, that's it for today. Again, as Damien said, it will be in the photography think tank. If you're not in the photography think tank, the recording is there. Take it, share it with as many photographers as you can. And the meeting link is there for next Tuesday. And we really look forward to you coming on board with us to make this happen. Thank you so much. Let's make the industry the profession it used to be when I joined it back in 1986. You know, that, that would be the fantastic bit for us. And let's make that professionalism 
generate so much income for the NHS that we're proud. That's all we want. We want to be proud. Thank you, Damien, so much. Goodbye, Pleasure. everybody. Pleasure. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.